Welcome to this installment of Blank Canvas. My name is Fran Lozon and you're in my studio in the middle of Medicine Hat, Alberta. Today I'm going to be painting a picture that I took over at the College Ponds a couple of winters ago, but it's just like today. Lots of uh, nice shadows and the, everything is over at the College Ponds. A couple of winters ago, lots of uh, nice shadows and the, everything is frozen with a lot of snow except uh, the tree. You can see the trees and the bulrushes. I like this uh, picture because it can be simplified and it also shows a nice contrast in the colors between the darks, the oranges of the bulrushes and the shadows and the white of the, the uh, snow. So I have uh, attempted this a couple of times and today I'm going to uh, do it for the fourth time. So this is my first one that I did and I wasn't, it's on a smaller uh, format so I want it to do a larger so I'm repeating it. This was my second attempt and I felt that the placement of the orange section which the bulrushes wasn't quite where I wanted it and then that one is my final attempt at it. So I'm painting on arches 140 pound cold pressed paper. I have it attached to my board with hockey tape clear hockey tape and I have marked the halfway marks on each of the four sides just to give me a bit of a format. So I'm going to just draw with my brush. First I need to activate my paints and I do that just by spraying on my palette. Then I'm going to use uh, the lightest of the blues, um, cerulean blue, to do my drawing. And I'll look at my main reference for this. So I just start with this rigger brush and just map in where I want my trees to be because they're the most important element in the, in the layout of the piece. This uh, tree over here gives me a bit of a complex because it leads right out of the uh, painting. So I need to have this branch that comes up because it helps come back into the painting. So I'm just sketching quickly with my brush and lightly, hopefully. And I do not want this tree because it makes an X. So I'm not putting that one in. And I'm trying to avoid having everything, anything in the center, which is why I had marked the centers. Then I'll put the uh, horizon line, if you will which is actually where the college is, but I'm not going to be painting the buildings of the college. And hopefully I've got that fairly straight. Then this clump of bulrushes back here, and then the one that comes along here. And then the water is here, but we'll just leave that the white of the page, of the paper. And then this comes in like this. And, of course, being the artist, you can change whatever you want. Now, if I don't like what I drew, I can take a paper towel and I can lift it pretty quickly. So, I'm not dissatisfied with that. I would like to have this bit of snow bank, if you will, come along here. And I see I've got a bit of red in my snow. That, that's not so good. <laughs> Try and get that off right, right at the get-go. Okay, so then I'll go with my larger brush, mix up a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, which will be my background color for back in here. I'm not going to worry about the other little trees because I can paint them over top of this, but I would like to have these. I want these trees because they, want, they need to be light against the dark. You'll notice I have three uh, water jugs and that's because when you paint you need to have your brushes clean in between and I like to have three because I can get one for sure if I remember which one to have um, very clear water. There's something in this brush that's why it's coming yellow but I'm not going to let it worry me. And I'm going to wet this whole section before I paint because I want this to go on in a wash. And 
I may actually even turn my board for this. So I'm painting around the trees and following my guidelines that I put on earlier. And you'll see that uh, because I use that light cerulean blue that they pretty well disappear in my guidelines. And you won't know that I drew with a brush. And then all of this. And I'm painting this section first because I have to paint the other trees over top of it so it needs to be dry a little bit and it'll get dry as I, w as I work on the other sections down below. And I don't want this to be uh, too flat, all of one color I guess what I need to say. So I'm just f what they call floating in color here and there. And I'm going to let the watercolor do its own thing and hopefully it it's, it's good for me. Watercolor is an interesting medium because you're painting with water and that's, uh, it, it goes where it wants and does what it wants. And I kind of like that little light spot. Like on this one, I have that light spot. So I'm going to paint just with a bit of water there and let that uh, do its thing. So I'm going to have a, a next section uh, where it's not quite as dark. So I think that's not bad for that. Oh, I don't like that little white spot there. Touch him up. And I'm going to take my paper towel and get rid of this across the top of the tape. So that was pretty quick. <laughs> so we'll let that dry as I work on the rest. So this pot will be my real dirty pot here. And I'm cleaning my brush in now. Because now I need to do the section with the bulrushes. And I need that to be very clear. Otherwise it'll start to look muddy and not as nice. So I'm mixing here a color called New Gamboge and orange, cadmium orange, and some raw sienna, and I might even put some quinacridin gold in it. Quin gold is how we shorten that color. And another tool that I have is just scraps of paper and I can test my color to see if it's what I want on there. So looking at my reference, I need this along in here. Now the edge where I painted originally, you can see it a little bit there, but hopefully that will disappear. And this is bulrushes, so I want to make strokes that are up and down to some extent because they are, you know, as you know, they grow up and down. They're not uh, stationary, flat going across. So I'm using that purposely to give the flow of the, uh, the bulrushes as I paint. So I'm going to do a fairly light wash on all this section where the bulrushes are. And right now it's kind of yellowy as compared to orangey, but we'll get to that in a bit. And if I take my smaller brush and just get some pure orange, a little bit mixed, I can start already to define what looks like um, upward strokes of, for the stem, the stalks of the bulrushes. So this is quite wet. This is called painting wet and wet because the whole area is wet and I'm just painting on top with wet. And as long as it stays wet like that, I can keep doing that. So I'm going to drag some of that up there because these bulrushes are up there at the back. At this point is often where people get discouraged because right now it doesn't look like much uh, because it's still just developing and it's easy to say, oh, this will never turn out. But you have to uh, gradually work yourself through that. You have to say, 
I can, I can keep going. I've got nothing to lose. I can, I've already started. Now, there, right here on top, front of this tree, there's where the little stars, they're actually probably uh, roots, sucker roots from the tree have grown up. So I'm going to try and get a few of those and preserve those just to add a bit more interest to these trees in the front. Okay, I think that, and these, uh, these couple of bulrushes are kind of prominent and then there's the, there's a few that, of stalks out here. They're either grasses or bulrushes, I'm not sure, but this guy here is definitely a bulrush. So I'm going to put him in and I'll put a couple over here like this. So I know where they are and I'm just switching to a little smaller brush and I'll go back to my dark just to get the, just give that a bit of definition. And again, it's still wet and wet, so it's not, it's not a hard line, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, now, it's a good, at this point, to just sit back and say, okay, am I good with my composition? And I know I am, because I've done this a couple of times, so I think I'm pretty okay with my composition. So my next step would be to put the shadows of the snow in. There's the brush I'm looking for. And I'm going to use Cerulean for that, but I have to make sure my brush is really clean. It's not quite dry enough right there, but I'll work around it. So I don't want to start real heavy with the cerulean, so I'm just mixing more water into it. So there's shadow in here. And what happens if you mix blue with this orangey yellow color, you'll get green. So I want to avoid doing that. Maybe my shadow is a bit greeny there. There's quite a shadow that comes off that tree. And there's a shadow that comes out here from this tree. So just the basic shadows so far. There's a shadow back in here, which gives interest to the whole thing. There's a shadow across the bulrushes here, but it's too wet to do that. And I know that if I drag that across, it'll get greeny. So I'm not going to do it right yet. And I'm just softening down this edge where the horizon meets and it still is a, a bit wet so I'm going to just be careful with how I do this. There's a little bit of shadow in here too so we'll get that in right now. And the biggest shadow is this big shadow at the front here on the on the foreground if you will. So with that one, I need a bit more paint in my tray. That one, I'm not going to, I'm going to try and make it go at an angle because again it gives a different flow to the painting. And I'll soften some of these edges just with water. Sometimes when you paint with water, watercolor you need to paint with water, just clear water. And I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow up into the bulrushes. Okay, and I might have to take a break here and dry a bit, and I think I will just just take take a quick break to dry this a little bit before I start on the trees. So I've got everything dried now, and when I look at my painting so far, there's a couple of things I'm not real happy with which is when I put the water here, I got what's called a bloom. So I'll have to think about what I'm going to do about that to correct it. There's also a bloom here where I put the snow shadow and then it came up into the bulrush. That's not probably as serious. You have to have your piece uh, dry in order to correct those. 
So I'm going to start on the trees and I'm going to be painting with two brushes and I've mixed up quite a dark color here which is again the burnt sienna and, uh, and the uh, ultramarine blue. And this gets a bit hairy because I am painting with two brushes. I just got clear water and I'm bringing this down allowing the water to mix. I don't want just a tree trunk that's um, just solid dark. I want it to be a bit interesting and I'll take some just some clear uh, burnt sienna there and I'm, I'm trying to get simulate the idea of the bark by doing it this way. And you can see that the dark shows against the dark background because it's darker than the background here. Now when I come down to here I have to paint around these twigs that I so I have to take a bit more care to paint around the twigs here. And I can make this tree just a, a bit bigger as I come down. Paint over top of the where I put the bulrushes. So I'll put a bit more burnt sienna right in here and leave it. It's hard to leave things sometimes. Now this uh, tree is dark all the way at the bottom so I'll start with my dark mix and again I have to paint around this. I should uh, you know if you want to make these simpler they're easier to do but it's good to have a brush that comes to a nice fine point like these. These are silver black velvet brushes and I have found them to be very economical and very easy to work with. So this is the branch that I told you needed to be there for the composition and I'm actually going to take quite a light color to emphasize it a bit more and come down my side like that on that one. You can do what you like with these because uh, you're the artist and you can change things as you go along. So I'm, again I'm going to make this tree just a bit bigger as I come up here and I'm just dabbing in color. Looks easy doesn't it? <laughs> and this sky has a bit of a Okay, so that's two of the three major tree trunks done. Put a little bit at the top there. So the third one is this one and I'll paint it the same way, come down the dark side. Mix a bit more paint here. Come down the dark side first. straight down. I didn't put any um, twigs growing in front of it so I might leave some space for it. And use my other brush. I'm going to clean that brush and just let it do its thing. Sometimes you need your brush drier. There's quite a bit of paint there. I'm going to take some off try and leave some spots for the foliage at the bottom and I might just leave that one for now. I might come back with a bit more color when it's a bit drier. Now there's all kinds of little uh, tree branches around there. Uh, before I do that I think what I need to do is put this shadow in that I didn't do before because it was too wet. There's a shadow right here and I've got still some burnt of the burnt sienna ultramarine in my in my brush. That sort of goes all the way back there. But if I go lightly over that uh, where the the uh, bulrushes are, I don't get that lifting up so much for the green that I mentioned to you before. It could be a possibility. That's not too bad. It's not and I'm going to just soften this edge here a bit with clear water. I don't want it to be that hard. Okay. So 
So I'll make some um, of these tree branches, these trees that are coming back up here. And I'm just going to take my brush and make them dark against the light, the lighter. It is dark back there, but it's still lighter than I'm making these branches and trees. And I just am imagining them. It always helps if you can see the real thing, but sometimes you have to imagine. And there's one right here. This is still wet. I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to start to make a few that come off of these trees that I just did. I'll just put them. I'm just going to work quickly here now so we can see what's going to happen with this rest of this painting. So that's sort of how I would do the, the branches coming off. And you have to make sure they look like they're joining into the overall the, to the main tree or else, like here, or else they just look fake. And I do want one in here. There is one in the picture. So I'm going to, and by the time maybe when I've done these trees, I'll be less concerned about that bloom that I talked about first. This one has kind of got several uh, um, pieces going up together. So we'll make that a bit different. So I'm going to leave those just as they are and show you a little bit about making the bulrushes. Clean these brushes a bit more. So again, this is dry. So I can look at this painting and see there's a little bit of a dark area here. So I can start by just making up and down strokes, different shapes, different amounts. And I'm going to cover that bloom there. Let's correct it. And this this will be simulate the uh, bulrushes. When you're painting, you're not trying to do a photographic rendering. You're trying to interpret what you see there. Make it your own to some extent. I love the bulrushes all, all year round, but I particularly like them when they're all fuzzy when they've gone to seed. So I like, I like being over there where there's bulrushes and things to see about along the edge of the ponds. And then I haven't really got these, but I can just put them on top. These this bits of stuff that is growing here. And I can do a bit more in around here. So this is will take time and I probably don't have total time to um, finish the, all of that with you today. I see I've got a bit of uh, maybe a dog walk there, I don't know, but I'm going to lift some of it I can. I don't want those marks on there. And I could put a few more of the real distinctive. You just need to see a few to say those are bulrushes. I'll get some orange and paint on top with the orange. And I might make one of these into a bull rush too. So this is what I would spend quite a bit of time probably finishing the uh, the bull rush area. And I probably will put more trees back in the back. I like this composition. It doesn't have sky, but uh, I like the composition because it's 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 wintry, and it's uh, it's got the high horizon. So wherever I feel I want to put some of this in, and I can bring in a bit darker. That's maybe a too dark, but we'll blot it up a bit. Take some lighter blue, maybe. That's more burnt sienna now I'm putting in. So 
So eventually it gets to have more definition. If there's an area I'm not happy with, I can try and lift it, which involves blotting, wetting the area with clear water and blotting it up with a piece of paper towel. So far I'm so far I'm thinking I'm okay. So I'm not doing that right yet. So I'm just about all that I can show you here. I I would thank you very much for watching this segment of Blank Canvas. And I do want to tell you that there are two watercolor groups, well, painting groups, in Medicine Hat that welcome new members. One is the Hat Art Club, which meets at the Cultural Centre, and they uh, have classes and have interests in all media, and I, I'm a member of that group. And the other is Strathcona Art Studios, which is an outlet uh, associated with the Viner Centre, so you do, do need to be a 50 plus to join that group and it meets on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. And you're welcome to look at the Hat Art Club on the internet, the Strathcona Art Studios, you can contact and find out more information from the Viner Center about that group. So back to the stormy weather that we've had and uh, painting again. Thanks very much. <music>